And so we're not done with the guests yet. We have someone else lined up. Um, the everyone's favorite future presidential candidate, <laughs> the uh, best union leader Whoa. on this side or the Welcome, other side. Welcome, Mr. President of the Mississippi. Uh. <laughs> Don't forget that um, the hashtag Run Richard Run. Um, hashtag Run Richard Run. Uh, Richard Hooker from Teams is Local Six Twenty Three. What's up? How y'all doing? Good. Welcome back, Richard. Um, since thank you're you, wearing you your jacket. Me. I just want to mention, I saw a, a really great article the other day that uh, proposed that if every union member were to get a cool bomber jacket, union density that. would skyrocket. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. like 50,000 people said that to you. <laughs> anyway, yeah, thoughts? I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, whatever we got to do to get people into the union, I'm, I'm in for it. If we right. got to give them jackets, uh, right. whatever, whatever we need to do. For sure. <laughs> and for people who don't know, you know, uh, Richard's uh, secretary treasurer of Teams is Local 623. They represent um, UPS workers and workers at Greyhound in Philadelphia. Um, so we thought it'd be great to bring you on because, you know, we, we re recently did a picket last Friday um, at UPS, one of the headquarters in Philadelphia. Um, you've seen some pictures of it now. I love the fat cat, never gets old. Um, oh, so yeah. could you just uh, say a little bit about, you know, what, what's been going on at UPS and why did you organize this rally? Well, UPS has a history of of just unsafe workplace measures. They they talk about safety, they talk about all these things, and it sounds good. But when it happens, um, the truth always comes out. I mean, there's a lot of stories out there where members can tell you how UPS handled them when they were injured on the job. Um, some of them are afraid to to report an injury because of fear of retaliation. And, you know, who wants to get hurt and then be retaliated against by the employer? You know, it's not your fault you got hurt. You know, things happen, you get hurt, you want to be taken care of, and you don't want to be mistreated. You don't want to be disregarded. But constantly, these things happen at UPS. So this is just one of many instances that UPS, they try to sweep under the rug. They don't want it to come out. Um, and Paul, you were there. You know, these guys were standing on the side of the street. They were hiding up in the, the office windows, you know, because they know we're telling the truth. And this continues to happen. And, and, I, and what I hope is that, you know, not just here at 623, but I think th these types of actions, especially when it comes to workplace safety and how they treat our members when an injury does occur, I think every local in in this country needs to have these type of rallies to show solidarity that you know it's really one you know one injury is, is to all injury to one is an injury to all you know i think we need to really participate in what that really means right and oh go ahead jen um i was just gonna ask so you know the pandemic is still going on. And throughout the pandemic, we've heard a lot of talk from everybody, from, you know, politicians, from commentators, from from activists, from celebrities about how important essential workers are. So I go around my neighborhood in New York and I see all these signs that are like, thank you, you know, UPS. Thank you, you know, uh, USPS, FedEx, like doctors, you know, grocery workers. Um, there seems to be a lot of public support for essential workers right now. And I'm wondering if you're seeing any of that translate into a difference in your working conditions or if UPS management, you're already shaking your head. I was going to ask if UPS no. management feels like they no. have more pressure. No. Okay. So say more about that. Yeah. UPS, listen, um, UPS doesn't care about what the public has to say about um, essential workers. I mean, they don't even care. You know, they don't care. All they care is is, is the packages move to point A and to, to point B and how they can get them there faster. If, they, if you know, if it has... If it's on the back of the member, they don't care. They don't care if you're sick. They say they care. Um, stay home and all these kinds of things. And, and again, it sounds good to the public because what I've noticed is what's going to happen is UPS will change the narrative and they'll say, hey, we're doing all these great things. We're providing uh, PPE. We're providing uh, two weeks of COVID pay. We're doing all these great things and that's good. But what they don't tell you is, hey, listen, um, we also are forcing our people to come in on an unscheduled work day. And if they can't come in, we're going to discipline them for it. I done gave you almost 60 weeks, 60 hours, 60 hard hours to, to make you more profitable. 
And now if I can't give you any more, you want to take my job away from me. And that's the story that doesn't get out there. Mm-hmm. It's easy for them to say, hey, man, we're doing this. And that's, and that's all fine and good because that's what they're supposed to do. These guys make billions of dollars. But what we don't want done is, okay, if a person can't come in on an unscheduled day and they got things planned, they don't want to get retaliated or disciplined because they have a life outside of UPS. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that, and that's the message that, to me, that also needs to be exalted out there so people to see. It's not just about, you know, um, you know, UPS make it all, you know, they, 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 they provided all this PPE, which we had to fight for, Paul. You remember all that. We had to go a, a year ago, pretty much to this week. We had to go to the news. We had to go to the papers just to get them to do the right thing again for our members. UPS is not going to do the right thing on their own. Mm-hmm. You have to force them to do it. You got to bring the fat cat out. You got to bring the news out there. You got to bring city council. You got to bring state reps because they're not going to do the right thing on their own. You have to force them. You have to, to pretty much expose the whole matter and not just the part that makes them look good. Because there's a, again, I said it on the last show, there is a dark, dark place in UPS that people really need to know about. Mm-hmm. And there was a, I mean, a specific incident with a member, with a woman um, who got injured. Do you mind talking about that a little bit? Just so you know, what, what kind of triggered so, some of this? So, again, uh, I really want to put this out there. This happens all over the country. It's not just 623. It's not just Philly. Up and down the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, the Plains, you name it. What I'm about to tell you happens in every, pretty much every UPS barn, Every UPS city, um, it happens in, in, in their location. So this is what happened. Back on February the, the, the 4th, we had a young lady who was working, and she fell, and she broke her wrist, and she broke two bones in her arm. What UPS decided to do was let her sit um, in pain. She was crying. Um, she wanted to get medical attention. Uh, the the frontline supervisors are also known as the part time supervisors. They wanted to take her to get medical treatment. However, the upper management said, "No, you leave her there. You get back with the operation, and then we'll make sure she gets um, medical treatment at seven thirty. This happened at almost five o'clock in the morning. So for two and a half hours, she had to sit and wait to get medical treatment. Because of this, she had to have emergency surgery on her wrist and two broken bones in her arm. Now, um, I, I, and check this out. They didn't give her union representation when this happened. Because they knew if the steward was there, then they would have been able to get that, uh, our member some help. Because the steward for that ship, ship, ship is very, very good. He's not going to take no mess. And they know that. So they avoided him to try to hide it from him, let her sit there, and then look what happened. So she's in pain. She had to have emergency surgery. Um, so I immediately, when I found out, I got in contact with the labor division of our area, and I said, hey, what are we going to do about this? This can't happen. Why did it happen? Who was the cause of it? So we did our investigation. Um, some supervisors reached out to us because they don't like what happened. The very first thing one of the uh, full-time management team told uh, one of my business agents is, if, if, if this was their daughter, they would have got, you know, I remember some help. Hmm. And everybody knows that. If this was their family, if this was their spouse, their, their daughter, their child, they would have gotten them some help. If, if it was a CEO, they would have flew the doctor in there. Right. right. Yeah. But, yep. but when it comes to the working person, they care nothing about nothing. And, and it shows it. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about who came out to that rally to support? Like what people, organizations, unions were out there? So we had District Council 33 here in Philly. Uh, there's a public sector uh, union. Um, they, they came out. The, the president came out. Uh, Ernest Garrett, he came out. He's the president there. Uh, we had um, the secretary treasurer was Ask Me 810. Monica Robinson, she came out. We had state representative Malcolm Kenyatta. 
He was also a candidate for the U.S. Senate. He came out, state representative, the council of all. He came out. We had um, councilwoman Helen Gim. She came out from, you know, from Philly. Uh, we also had uh, Jed Dodd, which is the vice president of a section of the railroad division of the Teamsters. Uh, our shop stewards came out. We had Philippos, which, which uh, they did with safety measures and workplace. They came out. Um, it was just a good, good, good rally. Um, also, the labor managers from UPS, they came out, but it was on the other side of the right. street. <laughs> and, right. and, 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 and I, and I want to keep I want to keep focusing on that because while they were on the other side of the street and while the, 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 the regional president was up in her office and the, the, the president, or I should say the, the head labor manager of our district was up in the office looking out to see what was happening. Um, they should have been out there too to give us some type of ex explanation on why did they let this member, our member Salifa Burrell out there in pain for all that long time, because if it was them, their family, their loved one, their daughter, it would not happen. It wouldn't have happened. But for whatever reason, they prioritize packages over people, and it's a constant thing. And I'm hoping that everybody watching this, um, share this, talk to you know y y the people in your communities about this, because this is who UPS is. This is who they don't want you to know about. Yeah, they, they, they ship a lot of stuff and they do a lot of things, but it's all because of the worker. Mm -hmm. And this is how they treat the worker. Mm -hmm. All right. And then just the last question, um, you know, what kind of things do you have planned next? I'm partly asking so I can put stuff on my calendar. But, uh, you know, okay. what, what are some next steps? You, so you feel like I think what we need to do is have like a massive, massive, massive rally. Uh, every local in this country, because it happens in every local, every last one of them. Um, I was in our building last night talking to the members and they were telling me stories about when it happened, you know, to them when they got hurt and what the company tried to do. This goes on everywhere in UPS, in their whole company, everywhere it happens. So what we're going to do, what I'm trying to organize now is a national uh, safety rally for just every UPS um, barn in the country. I reached out to a, a few people today um, and I, I want to get this done um, because you're going to have to have a massive action to, in order to beat UPS. Mm -hmm. One local can't do it alone. It has to be every local with the same same agenda, same message. It's not about politics. How can we stop UPS? Because I had a conversation with the president of our district yesterday and the underlying message is this, Paul. This, this is the message. Hooker, we were wrong. We didn't do the right thing. We should have got a help. But I'm not going to allow you to dictate to me on moving um, the division manager because he made a, uh, a, a bad call. We know we were wrong. Mm. But I would rather uh, pay the cop. I would rather pay her lawyer, pay whatever suit she got. I would rather pay millions of dollars before I let the union believe that they can win against us. Right. That's the underlying message. That's the message. It has nothing to do with Salifa and getting her, her what she wants. We cannot let the union win. That's what this is about. Right. And you know, it's the same with the schools. Like they want to push yeah. them in for like one month of instruction just to send the message that they can do it. You know? Yep. But uh, thanks so much, Rich. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Um, but thanks for coming on. I'm sure you'll come Thank on you. again soon. You are audience favorite. Whenever, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank well, you. I Good luck. You, yeah, I appreciate it. Whenever you guys get ready, Paul, you know, keep your phone because we get ready to yeah. hit this thing because um, we're right. not going to stop. We're not. Mm -hmm. um, she, Sanifa deserves justice. Her, her son deserves an answer. Uh, her local family deserves an answer. And we plan on giving her that answer. All right, so you, hear, you heard it here first, everybody. National rally on the horizon. Right. Stay yes. tuned in your area. Oh, yes. All right, Rich. Thanks so much. Thanks, Have Rich. Have a good one.